trees in winter, lonely sentinels of life that lie dormant while their twin nemeses, darkness and ice, rule the landscape. Stoically, their stark trunks and branches await the return of light and warmth. It is only then that they can once again don their panoply of green and gold. But for now, Come along as we survey the world of winter trees in Northampton, Massachusetts. Okay, we uh, just heard that hokey introduction to this, but we really want to talk uh, more seriously about winter trees. Um, this is John and Gabe, and we did a project to film the winter trees here in Northampton. Gabe, you came up with this idea a long time ago. You were really impressed with uh, the trees here in Northampton in the winter. What is it that, that got you excited about trees in winter? Well, there's a couple of things that are really interesting uh, to notice in, in the winter, uh, especially as an arborist. The, the first thing is that it's a lot easier to see the structure of the, of the tree. The branches and the trunks are more visible without the, the leaf cover. So you can see any problems and you can really appreciate the, the growth of the tree. Uh, it's also uh, interesting because it's the, the period of winter dormancy, trees in cold climates uh, go through a series of processes to allow them to survive the, the cold winter temperatures, um, which is uh, really kind of interesting in, on its own. Um, leaf drop is the, the most visible sign of the beginning of dormancy, and it actually progresses throughout the whole winter um, with the, the whole metabolism and, and growth of the tree slowing uh, with the colder temperatures. Some things continue to, to happen when the weather is warm enough, the, the roots will continue to grow and take up water and nutrients, um, and towards the end of the winter, uh, the dormancy breaks in it kind of slowly and, and bud growth begins. And it's, it's a really interesting time to watch the tree uh, come alive, and a lot of people just don't appreciate it, but it's a great time to do tree pruning. Um, it's a lot less impact on the tree, and it's a lot easier to see what's going on, so it's uh, just a time to remember that they're still out there, even though they don't have any leaves on them. Um, you still want to get out and appreciate the trees. Now we're looking at some really great examples of trees here in Northampton. The first one that we're looking at is the sycamore. I'm, I'm really happy to have gotten it straight between a sycamore and a birch. I've always confused these two, not being an arborist. I go, oh, it has white bark. It must be a birch. Well, obviously they're a lot bigger than a birch, so that's kind of a giveaway right there. Um, what else would you look for in a sycamore tree? I mean, they're really stately, beautiful. When you talk about architecture, I mean, this is this is incredible. Um, what is it with the bark that it's all kind of shaggy like that? Why why does it do that? Well, the bark is is one of the easiest ways to identify a, a sycamore tree. They've got uh, really beautiful bark. It's uh, white and uh, flaky, and it gets smoother as it moves towards the top of the tree. It's uh, one of the easiest ways to identify the tree. I, I think that they look substantially different from a birch tree. They're, they're really um, the, the most massive tree that we have growing here on the East Coast, and they're far larger than a birch tree. They can achieve really gigantic proportions, um, and there's a number of them in Northampton. This are, one is down at Mainsfield, and this one is just a, a beautiful tree. The earlier one we saw was at Smith College. And they are, as far as architecture goes, I think these are some of the most beautiful trees trees around. They are. They're really a, a beautiful tree. They're native to this area. There's uh, several examples in uh, in Northampton that are really exceptional, and also in Massachusetts, uh, really, really large trees. And, and Here's the one beautiful. at Smith again. Yeah, this is a nice shot over Paradise Pond. And just you can get the scale of it when you can see people there. Yeah, it's a, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be uncommon to find a, a tree with a, a trunk diameter of 10 plus feet and uh, large, uh, you know, wild trees in, in ideal conditions, maybe even 20 feet and, you know, 150 feet tall could be something that you'd find. They're really a, a very massive tree and some of the 
biggest that you'll find on the East Coast anywhere. Now we're going on to a, a tree that really surprised me when we started this project, the elm tree. I was, uh, not being an arborist, I always thought that elm trees were extinct. If there was one, it was like very rare. But you showed us, and will show us in this film, that they're all over Northampton, that they're just an incredible tree. And I think uh, the viewers will be able to recognize these uh, now that they see it on this film. This one, again, is on the Smith campus, um, right in front of the Gray Court gates. And it is just beautiful. It's uh, really tall, and uh, they aren't extinct. So uh, there are still quite a few remaining American elm trees. Um, the Dutch elm disease is a fungus which, which is spread by beetles and was introduced in the 1930s um, and it spread throughout all of uh, North America and New England, um, although some trees did survive uh, because they were either uh, naturally resistant, which is pretty rare, or because they were protected by arborists using treatments to uh, prevent the uh, infestation by the beetles and spread of the fungus. So some trees were protected, especially significant trees in cities. Um, so the, the trees that were resistant were hybridized with other types of elms. There are many other types of elms, and they're not all susceptible to the Dutch elm disease. So hybrid cultivars have been developed to replace the American elm, um, and they are being planted, although not they're not as graceful and stately as the American elm, which was considered to be one of the most beautiful trees and, and the best tree for urban areas and parks. Um, it's just a really beautiful tree with a great shape and What's its lifespan? How long does a, an elm live normally? I mean, what it's oh, a couple hundred years, and it's wow. also so. Here's some trivia for all you uh, mass people: that American elm is the state tree of of Massachusetts, and it was to commemorate George Washington taking command of the Revolutionary Army um, during the the Revolutionary War. Well, now we're moving on to the maple, which I would have thought was the Massachusetts state tree. <clears throat> Tell us a little bit about the, the maple tree. It's pretty important. So the sugar maple is one of the most uh, common and well-loved trees in this area and all throughout New England, uh, mostly for the maple syrup, which it produces. Um, you will find it along roadways and old farmyards, as well as in uh, native forests. It's... um. Uh, a good hardwood tree with the uh, timber, which is in demand for woodworking purposes. It's um, it's a, just a, a really common tree in the area and is probably one of the most significant uh, in New England. It's uh, it, it, for for winter trees. It's interesting to note because the the flow of the sap is a the a good sign of the the end of dormancy. The trees break dormancy slowly uh, here and in the. And so we produce a lot more sap than other places where the where the trees grow. It's um it's one of the first things that you're going to see as the trees start to wake up is that uh, all the the maple syrup buckets going out. So that's uh, a, a really interesting thing to to notice. Um, the the leaf is a is a really iconic symbol for the the sugar maple. The five lobed leaf appears on the Canadian flag and is something that anyone living in this area is going to be really familiar with from raking, uh, you know, truckloads of leaves every year. Uh, so the sugar maple is uh, just a tree that you will see, um, you know, on almost every street corner in, in, in Northampton. They're, they're very, very common. Now we're moving on to another really important tree um, for wood and, and other things, the, the white pine. Is that what this is? This is right downtown. Is this the white pine? Okay. So the eastern white pine is uh, uh, the tallest tree that you're going to find in this area, up to 150 feet. Um, it's a very fast-growing tree that will colonize uh, newly opened areas and has gone through many phases of uh, logging and timber importance in New England. It was uh, really important in the early colonial period. Um, for shipbuilding, for ship masts, um, it's yeah, it's so straight. I can see that as a ship mast. That's, you can see it right there. Yeah, it's a, it's the ideal timber species in New England for for many purposes. For any softwood, the the white pine is uh, considered to be the premier timber species. It's it's really quite an exceptional tree. 
Now, here we are uh, in Florence, <clears throat> in the graveyard, looking at a beautiful oak tree. Is this a specific kind of oak? What is this that we're looking at? So that's a white oak. And uh, there's a number of different types of oak that grow commonly in Northampton. Um, the, probably the two most frequently seen are going to be the red oak and the white oak. Uh, the, the white oak can be distinguished by a couple of different features. Uh, the leaves have got a, a more uh, rounded tip. Um, but during the winter, the leaves aren't going to be present. You might find some on the on the ground, or as on this tree, you see some still hanging on there. The bark is is going to be more flaky and and peeling, and the and the tree has got a, a much uh, wider, more spreading shape than the red oak. Um, so that's going to be some of the the ways to tell them apart. Uh, they're they're both pretty common. Um, there's also a couple of other types, pin oaks and bur oaks and chestnut oaks and other things that you'll find around, but uh, the white oak is is really one of the most beautiful. Now we're moving on to the beech tree. We have left Florence for back at Smith College around Paradise Pond. This is just a beautiful tree. Tell us a little bit about the beech tree. Well, is this native? Yeah, the beech is a, is a native tree in New England. Um, one of the things that uh, you'll see right here, many people remember the beech tree because the smooth bark uh, it is a place where they might have carved their name when they were a kid. So that's one of the, the first things you'll notice uh, about a birch tree, it's, and it's an easy way to identify it during the winter. The smooth bark looks almost like uh, elephant skin. So they're, they're really pretty cool trees, um, and they're common in Northampton, uh, typically 60 to 80 feet and 2 to 3 feet in diameter, although they can get to be quite a bit larger. Uh, they also produce beech nuts, which are an uh, important uh, source of food for wildlife like deer and um, turkeys and squirrels and, and other creatures out in the woods depend a lot on the beech nuts. So they're, they're also a really important uh, part of the forest and, and local tree system here. We moved on to a different tree here. This is just a craggy old dead tree on Paradise Pond. We thought we'd show you that to emphasize the winter trees that uh, it's hard to tell a dead tree from a winter tree, but the winter trees are fully alive are growing underground, the root systems are growing, and this just happens to be one that died, and it's just a spectacular looking crag here over the pond. Gabe, now we're moving on to the cottonwood tree. This is one of your favorites. Um, what What is it you like about the cottonwood tree? I, there's a lot of things that I like about cottonwoods. Um, they are a tree that not everybody loves. Uh, I, I really like them because they just are First of all, really massive, and, and they have, they're a, a tough tree to climb, working as an arborist. They're tough to, to work on and tough to move around on. Um, they don't have a lot of small side branches, and they just have sort of a really gigantic, massive uh, scale to them. Uh, and they're also the home, in, in native settings, they're home to a lot of wildlife. They have a lot of uh, hollows and decayed spots, which uh, provide places for birds and other creatures to live. Um, and I, I just think that they're really a, a pretty tree. Um, you know, this is, again, is on the Smith campus, and you can find the Smith College has a great map and has great labeling on their trees. They have a map of, of the trees on their campus, and it's, it's great, to fun, great fun to follow. We, we've done that. Now, is this a cottonwood tree, too? Again? That's another one down at Mainsfield. Yeah, this is Mainsfield. Um, so we're hoping that we're, we're showing you some of the best examples of trees here in Northampton. Uh, Northampton is a great tree city. Uh, there's a tree commission here that, that looks after shade trees and really pays a lot of attention to them. And as we've seen, the Smith campus is just one of the greatest uh, arboretums that you're ever going to come across. Very well tended, very well labeled. So not just the greenhouse, but grab a map there and, and take a walk around campus. And here we're going to close with the birch tree, um, a very common tree here around Northampton. Tell us real quick about the birch tree game. So the white birch is uh, going to be most easily identified in the winter by its uh, white uh, peeling bark and that's something that almost anybody would recognize. Uh, it's It had many uses. Uh, people know of the um, birch bark canoes and, and, and other things that were made from the bark. Um, it's a tree that you'll find quite commonly in the forest, maybe a little bit less common planted as a, a landscape tree, although I think that the, the white bark really makes it stand out and gives it some uh, really unique appeal. Um, 
you know, I think get, we've, we've really shown the major tree species here in Northampton. We've picked out the best examples, and we hope that our viewers are going to get to follow in our footsteps, go find these trees, and enjoy the winter trees of Northampton, Massachusetts.